Hey everybody, Kuhan here at C2E2 2015. I'm going to be talking to some former writers and artists for Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps, and Green Lantern New Guardians. So check me out. Out! Kuhan out! What? I'm here now with Matt Bat Banning, former inker on the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, it was the Corps, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and New uh, Guardians. And New Guardians. That's right. That's right. So you work with uh, Tyler Kirkham. That's right. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um, he, you're actually uh, you're a Joe Kubert School grad, aren't you? I'm a Kubert School dropout. A Kubert School dropout. Well, you still made it into the comics world, so that's yeah. that's something, right? That's why I dropped out. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Uh, what's uh, what's the process like uh, for inking as opposed to, for example, you know, doing some of your original art? What's 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 that like? What was the process on on, on New Gardens and Greenland specifically with with Tyler? Well, Tyler would send me the pencils. Um, Tyler pencils, great stuff. Um, but basically, my job is to define things a little bit more clearly and actually create, make sure that the separation between characters and backgrounds and foreground and that the lighting all works appropriately to bring emphasis to the proper things in a panel. Did you, did you have any input yourself on, on anything in New Guardians at all or was it or was it you know all Tyler and then you just got it back for you? Um, as far as like the art went, like you know, Tyler pencils it, like if you're asking, like if I'm reading the script, making suggestions, not so much. Every once in a while, I, I have cover suggestions and things like that I would throw at him. And there was a couple times, like we got stuck and I threw out a couple ideas. But, you know, basically, Tyler's pretty good. The pages come in and I get to sit down and do my job, make, a, make sure it looks pretty. And what are, you, uh, what are you working on now? I know you did some, like, some ink some covers for David Finch, is that right? I uh, did some of that. Uh, I did an issue of Wonder Woman with David, but actually what I just finished up was Wonder Woman Convergence number two uh, with Aaron Lepresti uh, with comic book legend Larry Hammer writing. Um, my first chance to work with Larry, that was exceptional. My first chance to work with Aaron too, and that turned out great. Um, I started posting uh, panels of it and stuff on my on my Facebook at Banning at Facebook and uh, people seem to dig it Aaron really dug it and that's my current gig that was my current gig and right now I'm actually just taking a little break alright and last question what's your favorite part about conventions like C2E2 is the fan interactions and seeing your peers do their announcements but what, what's, what's your favorite part of, of these uh, kinds of cons my favorite part is actually talking with the fans and talking about the work and because you know you have the new people who are like oh I'm here because I loved your work on Green Lantern or like Superman Wonder Woman, which is the book that I launched last year with Tony Daniel. Or, you know, they go all the way back to the stuff like I did at Top Cow, where I was inking Mark Silvestri on The Darkness, and inking all the guys in the Top Cow studio, basically, yeah, yeah. at one point or another. Um, Even still sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, from time to time, like Dave or Billy Tan. Like, yeah, since we've all left Marvel, I've had chances. We've all had chances to work together again, which is great because I love those kind of full circle moments in my career. Yeah. All right, I am here now with Gene. Ha, how's it going, Gene? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I My Kickstarter just launched on Friday. It's uh, Saturday night, and it already reached its first goal. All right, I was actually going to ask about that. Uh, what's, uh, what, what, do you, do you have any, what, what are your big plans for, for, your, for your new book? Uh, let me see. It's called May. Um, I'm going to publish it myself, but I don't want to do that forever because uh, don't take offense to this, guys, who work at Diamond. But you guys terrify me because I would be a single lone businessman dealing with a large corporation that has to keep Marvel and Dark Horse happy uh, and other very large corporations. And if I have trouble, I don't, can't expect you to pull my ass out of the fire. <laughs> All right. And uh, you, uh, on, the, on the sort of the DC side, you seem to do a lot of, a lot of spot work for DC. Uh, whenever you, like, when you get the call, do you just work straight on the book or, or you know, would you prefer to, to have some monthly some, something or, or, gra or a graphic novel? See, the thing is, um, yeah, I don't have any desire. To, I want to do perfect little books when I can. And that's part of the reason I, I'm doing my own thing, so I can do everything my way at my own pace. But um, when I do work for DC, first of all, I want a really great script. And you may notice that there's a lot of very legendary writers I've worked with, like Grant Morrison lately. Obviously, I, like a bloodhound, I tracked down Alan Moore when I was younger. Um, I keep on returning to fables because I get to work with Bill Willingham, who... I started reading as a teenager, and every time I get older and my tastes improve, his skill has improved at a faster pace. I'm always happy reading his work. So, I mean, that's what the, those are things I look for. And a legendary run on a superhero book has never been one of my big goals in life. So, well, what, what would you say is your proudest piece of work so far? Proudest piece? 
Uh, and then long-term thing, I mean, it would be the interact, you know, my work with Alan Moore on Top 10 of the 49ers as a complete opus. Uh, there's little pieces where I did jewels where I'm very proud of them as short stories. Not as, you know, not as an epic opus thing, but just sh little short pieces that I think are incredibly beautiful. Like, um, I'm frankly very proud of the story that Xander Cannon and I did for uh, Bongo Comics, Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror. And if you haven't tracked it down, it was one of the, it was the most fun, fun I've had actually in the process of drawing because it's Simpsons characters. And I rendered them epically in my kind of black and white ink wash looking marker style. And I, and I got everything perfect cinematically. But it was Simpsons. It was easy and fun. And I could do that for the rest of my life happily if it was just about uh, having fun while drawing. But that's not what Obsession's about. Obsession's not about enjoying it in the moment. It's being able to sleep afterwards thinking, okay, I got that, something done that's been a lifelong goal, and now I can sleep because it's not annoying me anymore. I know. I would, I would always doodle Simpsons characters in the margins of my, of my notebook at school. <laughs> you doing that too? Oh, yeah. See, yeah, doing that for... I mean, I was drawing superheroes in the margin of my books as a, as, as a kid. So. Oh, Homer Simpson's a lot easier to draw than, than Superman sometimes. Uh, the Simpsons came out during my freshman year of college, and I did not own a TV. So it's just like this fascinating thing that ev all of Russ America was experiencing. And I experienced the Simpsons in the Detroit Free Press articles. <laughs> and t-shirts. Everyone had the t-shirts back then. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned big goals, how, you, how it's not a legendary run on superhero work. What is sort of, what, what are your, your big goals for your career? Uh, a few of them I've already accomplished. Um, uh, okay, so for instance, when I was uh, younger, there's some writers who I outgrew, I'm not going to name them, but there's other writers I never outgrew, and obviously I just mentioned Bill Willingham. Another one is uh, Alan Warren. I got to work with them. Um, I mean, I still have a goal of, say, working with, uh, like, Kurt Busiek. And I've done a short story with him for um, uh, the Hero Initiative, but I'd love to do a longer work with him and just really do everything. Again, I want to get everything right on my art end. That's one of my big goals. And it's hard to do that on a monthly book because it's just scrambling to meet the deadline. Um, and just, just doing something long form with him would be great. Uh, finishing, up, uh, my, finishing up my storyline with Xander Cannon on Top Ten on season two, uh, is it called season two or three? I can't remember now. It's, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I forgot the official name. I know what Xander likes to call it, and I, know, I, can't, I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but also, I, mean, I also want to do uh, my Kickstarter book as a series, as uh, my main project for the rest of my life. I just love doing that and writing it and becoming a better comics creator altogether by just controlling every aspect of it and just learning how it's done. Because I don't know it all yet. I've just started writing professionally. So. Do you, have any, do you have any stretch goals on the Kickstarter or anything, anything you're, you're trying to do beside, beyond the, 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 the amount you've been funded already? Uh, okay, so how, um, when is this interview going to be released? Because I've got a secret, and I can, I can kind of press embargo, tell you right now. I can, I can release it after you want me to embargo. That's no problem. Okay, so, I mean, as long as you don't post it tonight. I will not post it tonight. Okay, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, confirmed for a second time that Katie Cook can be my first stretch goal. And I am a huge fan of her work. And I am excited by that a lot of the people that a lot of the people she appeals to are people I want to reach out to to expand the comics market. So she is my first stretch goal. Getting up uh, every print tier is going to get an eight by ten print of her artwork. Uh, don't quote me on the exact size; it might be larger or a little smaller than that. But uh, the full size print, as big as I can get inside of a graphic novel without it folding it, uh, including the tiers that before only had five by seven sketches or five or five by seven pinups. So. And they can find all the details about that, about that on, on GeneHa.com? Uh, yeah, it, uh, by the, uh, I need to go back to my hotel room after I get drunk tonight <laughs> and hope I don't make mistakes and type it in. So, yes. Or, or you're, are you, you're at GeneHa on Twitter? Uh, oh, at GeneHa on Twitter. Uh, let me see. Yeah, and they, I am, there's a few GeneHa's on Facebook, but I am the two most famous for my official page and my personal page, so it's not too hard to find me. Um, yeah, I feel sorry for guys like... Uh, like J.H. Uh, Williams, like who's going to be the most famous John Williams in the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> that guy's got some big work coming out this year too. Um, and uh, last question is, uh, what's your favorite part of, of a convention like this, like C2E2? Is it meeting the fans? Is it, you know, watching other creators announce their big work? Obviously you announced your big work here, but, or, or is it, as you said, drinking? We are, we are just, uh, just five feet outside the bar right now. My favorite part is uh, reciting the Green Lantern Oath with fellow geeks. <laughs> Well, there we go. Thanks so much for doing this with me, Gene. It's fun hanging out. <laughs> All right, I'm here now with Aaron Cooter, who is the former artist on Green Lantern New Guardians. Uh, Aaron, how you doing? I'm good, good. How are you? That's good. That's good here. I'm doing pretty well. Um, 
My my producer Brandon actually I was just talking about. He's uh, he was a huge fan of you before you even hit New Guardians. He was saying you're gonna do bigger, better things right before you hit the book. Your time on that was brief, but now you're doing action comics, obviously, which is bigger and better. Uh, how uh, uh, sorry has the has the has it gotten to your head yet? Oh no, no. <laughs> um, I, I I have some very good family and friends that keep it from getting to my head. Um, and, and, you know, especially with working on action, uh, it's a book that has a 76-year history. Uh, some of the biggest names ever have worked on it. And now, and now you're on that list, you know? Yeah, well, no. There's no way that I'm, I'm going to be the biggest, baddest around, so... And are you, are you planning on sticking on the book uh, after the Truth Just storyline starting in June? Uh, yeah, after after Convergence, we start with the Truth storyline in June. Um, I will be actually uh, help uh, co-writing with uh, with Greg Pak. Um, he was gracious enough to let me do that, and I'll be drawing and uh, drawing and writing action still. Yeah. So when, when you were on, on Green Lantern uh, New Guardians, you did a lot of, of designing. Uh, do you have that same sort of creative freedom with action? How, what's the difference between working with Tony Dart and working with Greg Pak? Uh, well, the, with, um, with the Green Lantern stuff, I was able to draw a lot more like crazy aliens and like super weird constructs, whatever I wanted. Um, but And I don't get to do that as much with action, but it's it's stress, it's... It's working my other artistic muscles of um, lots of uh, story-based art and and less 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 fantasy, less sci-fi uh, hijinks. Is there any party that wants to return to the, to the lanterns because your time on them was just so brief? Yeah, yeah, there is a part of me that wants that, but you know. Like, I mean, you're on Superman no, now. You know, he's I the mean, big gun. I'm, I'm totally happy doing what I'm doing, but like, there is a part of me that was like, oh man, I. It's like I got up to bat and I, I was told to bunt. You know, you know, I was like, I want to hit a home run. Let me hit a home run. Um, I think you hit a couple home runs in your time on Green Lantern. You did some good stuff. I just, I just didn't have enough time. And you know, I was really new to the industry at the same time. Like, by the time I was drawing Green Lantern, uh, New Guardians, I had been working in comics for maybe a year and a half. And so, like, I was, I was every page, I was learning something. Uh, and now, like, yeah, I'd love to go back and play around in that pool and. And find uh, find new stuff to new, new stuff to to do that I wasn't able to do before. And uh, where where can people find find your art your other stuff uh, besides obviously action comics? Is there anywhere else that people can do you have a do you have a site for people to to look at, at any of your stuff at? Um, I have a DeviantArt page that I I don't update as much as I should. Um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and um, I uh, I have an art dealer, CadenceComicArt.com. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. And then the last question, what's your favorite part of C2E2, cons like C2E2? Is it interacting with fans? Is it, uh, is it you know, seeing all your peers make their big announcements? I know Jihad just had one. Uh, what's, what's your favorite part of cons like this? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's definitely the overall experience. I love, I love uh, the cosplay, the, the ca people dressing up as characters. It's just, like, Halloween's always been my favorite, favorite holiday ever. Um, uh, and, and and reconnecting with fans, like, cause you know, just this job requires me to work in my house for like 16 hours a day. So it's nice to talk to people again. Maybe maybe seeing the people who you work with all the time. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know, a lot of shows that I go to that like I don't actually see the people that I work with. I just see the people that are also in the industry. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, like you you, you get to talk about geeky stuff that you don't get to at home. It's fun. Yeah. All right, great. Thanks so much for doing this, Aaron. Thank you. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the Green Lantern Corps .com here at C2E2 2015. If you want to check out more of this great content, go to www.thegreenlanterncore.com or go to twitter.com slash thegelcore to find all of our news. Anything we post is going to be coming from there. Uh, YouTube.com slash glspotlers is going to find this and more great video content, hopefully, that we can do in the future. And you can follow me at I, iamkuhan.com or, or twitter.com slash kuhan. And that's going to do it. We will see you guys once again next year. Bye. This magic green, it is the color green, it can do anything, sometimes it speaks to me, it says how, what have you done with your life?
Okay, I'm going to point out to everyone that there's a little green lantern here. In brightest day. In the blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green lantern's light. And now that I've done the oath, I'm good for 24 hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs>